In this video, we're going to take a look at how to find the pH of a diprotic acid, sulfuric acid. It's said to be diprotic. Di means two, because it has two hydrogen ions to donate, H2SO4. So what we're going to have to do is two ice tables, two balanced equations, and we'll do two steps then. To, before we start, we'll just grab a Ka chart and we'll take a look at the two Ka values for sulfuric acid. So I've got a Ka chart here that we use in our data booklets. The first step, the first Ka value is here for sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and we see that the Ka value there is set to be large. That means that the first step in our dissociation is going to be a strong one. It's going to be 100% ionized because of that large Ka value. Now the second step, once we have the first hydrogen donated, we'll be left with HSO4 minus. So let's find HSO4 minus as an acid, and we see it right here, the hydrogen sulfate ion, HSO4 minus. Its Ka value is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2. Another way to say that would be 0 0.012. Okay, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2. That's a pretty big Ka, but it does not qualify as a strong acid. So what we'll do is a first step with a strong acid, and then we'll have to do a second step with a weak acid. So now that we've got the Ka values straight, I can just quickly write them down here. Ka1 is large, and Ka2 is 0 0.012. All right, so let's jump in and, and, and do this. Well, the first step, we'll write a balanced equation. H2SO4 reacts with water. You could pause the video at this point and see if you could write the two products that'll form. Okay, so the acid donates hydrogen to water. That'll create hydronium ions, H3O+. And you'll be left with the conjugate base of H2SO4, which is the HSO4 minus. Now notice that HSO4 minus here is behaving as the conjugate base of H2SO4. Once the acid here gave away the hydrogen, whatever's left is its conjugate base. If you read this reaction backwards, you'll see that HSO4 minus is accepting hydrogens from hydronium and that's going to give us H2SO4 back again. So in the reverse reaction, HSO4 minus is a base. But it still has a hydrogen ion to donate. That means it's also able to be an acid. So that means it qualifies as being amphoteric, right? Something that is either an acid or a base is said to be amphoteric. In this reaction, it's a, it's a, a base, a conjugate base, and in the very next reaction, we're going to write it as an acid. All right. We know that the water will not affect our equilibrium expression, so we'll just put an X under it. It's a liquid. Everything else here is aqueous and will end up in the equilibrium expression. The Ka value for this was large, which meant strong acid, right? It's a complete dissociation. This is strong acid. The concentration initially was 0 0.10 molarity. And as before, we recognize that there technically is a little tiny bit of hydronium in pure water initially. The pH of water is 7, so there has to be 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molarity hydronium initially. But 1 times 10 to the minus 7 is such a small number that we will ignore it and say that there's zero hydronium initially. The HSO4 minus is definitely zero. There's none of that initially in water. Now, since our acid was strong, it dissociates, it ionizes completely. So we'll lose everything that we had to begin with, which means at equilibrium, there's really no H2SO4 remaining. The one-to-one -one ratios here means that the hydronium will increase by 0 0.10 and the HSO4 will also increase by 0 0.10. So at equilibrium, after the first step, we have 0 0.10 molar hydronium and 0 0.10 molar HSO4 minus. So that first step is done. 
If this was the only step, we could very quickly now go find the pH, because there's the hydronium. But there's going to be some more hydronium produced in the second step. So we, we can't yet go find the pH. So we'll see if you can pause the video and write out a balanced equation for the second step in this dissociation. Right, you should have taken the HSO4 minus that was produced after the first dissociation and let it react with water. What will you produce? Well, you're going to get some more hydronium ions and you're going to get sulfate ions, SO4 2 minus. Remember, every time you lose a hydrogen, your charge will go down by 1. So H2SO4 was neutral. It lost a hydrogen. Its charge dropped to minus 1. The HSO4 is minus 1. It loses a hydrogen, so its charge drops to minus 2, or 2 minus. Now, let's do the ice table. Water is ignored again. The HSO4 minus, what is its concentration? Well, the key is that we are assuming that step 1 has finished, and now step 2 is starting. So the HSO4 minus that we start with is the HSO4 minus that we finished with in the previous step. So the concentration there is 0 0.10 molarity. Okay, the HSO4 minus produced in step one is what now starts step two. Now here is a place where lots of students make a mistake because they're not thinking, they're doing things by just memory. They're doing things by um, gut instinct. All, in almost all problems, we say that the initial hydronium is, is zero because it's so small. But realize that if we're going to take the 0.1 molar HSO4 and use it as our starting concentration here, we have to do the same thing with the hydronium because there now is hydronium in the water. It's not just 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molarity anymore. It's now 0.1 molarity. So that concentration is your initial hydronium concentration. Do not forget that. That's a very common mistake. There was no sulfates after the first step, so its concentration is zero. Now we'll go off to the side and we'll recognize that Ka2 is not large. It's only 0 0.012, which means therefore it's a weak acid. Weak acids do not dissociate completely, so this guy's only going to lose x. One to one ratios, he'll gain x, he'll gain x, and so at equilibrium you're going to have 0 0.10 take away x, you're going to have 0 0.10 plus x, and x. Now this is what we're going to be interested in later, the hydronium concentration. And notice it says 0 0.10, which was the hydronium produced in step one, plus X, which is the hydronium produced in step two. So that'll be the total hydronium in the solution after both steps. So how do we solve this? Well, we're going to write the Ka expression for step two. It's equal to concentration of hydronium times sulfate over concentration of HSO4 minus. And so it equals 0 0.012, that's the Ka value, and now we're not going to get an x squared now, we're going to get 0 0.10 plus x times x divided by 0 0.10 take away x, right, I'm putting in these three things from the equilibrium line into the equilibrium expression. All of our exponents are ones because the coefficients were ones in the balanced equation. Now, if you own a TI-84 solver, TI-83 solver, this is going to be very easy. But you do have to be careful with your brackets. So let's jump in here and solve this with the graphing calculator. So I'm going to turn the calculator on, clear my screen here. The solver is under the math button, so press math. And then if you scroll down, you'll see that on my calculator, it's got the number zero in front of solver. So I'll just press the zero on the keypad, and that will call up the solver. I've used the solver already, so there's an equation already entered and solved. To clear it, I'll press the up arrow on the keypad there, and then clear to get rid of the old equation. So there's the 
equation solver ready to be used. It wants the equation typed in as 0 equals. Our equation says 0 0.012 equals. To get 0, we'll just subtract 0 0.012 from both sides. So this will become 0 because we're subtracting it. And on the right, we'll have minus 0 0.012, right? We subtract it from both sides. So now we're going to enter all of this on the calculator carefully using brackets. The brackets are really important around binomials. So wherever there's two terms, here on top and here on the bottom. If there's only one term, like this x, then you don't really need to use brackets, but it doesn't hurt to do it. So open a bracket, 0.1 plus x, close the bracket, times, now you can press the times button or just type it like you see on your paper, open another bracket and put an x in there. So that means 0.1 plus x times x. Divide by, open another bracket, 0.1 minus x. Close the bracket. And then don't forget to subtract your Ka value minus 0 0.012. Press enter. Now the guess that we'll use at this point, we enter a guess on the solver. Our answer is going to be small and positive, so a good guess is just to say 0. The answer is going to be pretty close to 0. So we'll say 0, and then the alpha button, alpha and solve right above the enter button. And so the answer is 0 0.0098. Okay. Now, the second place where people make mistakes in this question is by reflex. They want to now just go find pH by taking negative log of this, which is what we would normally do in a weak acid problem. However, or look at your ice table. Underneath hydronium, we see the total hydronium is not just this number. It was 0.1 plus x. So we'll now say here the total hydronium concentration, total, looking at the bottom of your ice table, is 0 0.10 plus x. So that's going to be 0 0.10 plus 0 0.0098 which is equal to 0 0.10 plus 0 0.0098. I should be able to do that in my head, but it's been a long day. So I get 0 0.1098, which rounded off to two sig figs. 0 0.11 is what I'll say is the concentration. So notice step one gave us 0.1 molarity and step two gave us essentially 0 0.01. So it didn't really affect the hydronium that much in this question. Now we can find the pH, pH negative log of hydronium. Be sure to use the total hydronium, negative log of 0 0.11, negative log of 0 0.11, and the answer is just slightly less than one. So again, I'll keep two decimal places in the pH. 0 0.96 is my pH value. All right? So a couple of places where people make mistakes. What were they? Well, the first place they make mistake is to forget that the initial hydronium in step two is not zero. The hydronium here was 0.1 because of the 0.1 molar hydronium produced at the end of step one. The second common mistake people make is at the end when they found x, they forget to add that to the hydronium produced in step one, which was here at the bottom of the ice table, 0.1 plus x. So we went back and added 0.1 to our x value to get the total hydronium produced after both steps. Then we use that to find the pH of the solution. So there's a sulfuric acid problem. It's the only acid problem that involves two ice tables, a strong step followed by a weak step. Because it's the only problem of its kind in our, in our unit, the only one with this much work, you can guess that I tend to like to ask that on tests and uh, exams. It's a nice question because it has both weak acid and strong acid in the same problem. So be sure that you're confident doing it in your homework assignments 
this, uh, there are some practice questions for sulfuric acid starting at question 33 in the yellow booklet. There you go.